Okay, um, it looks like uh, attendance has started um, trailing off, so uh, we're, why don't we get started? Um, so first off, uh, I am going to be asking a question and we'll be asking people to raise their hands. So if you want to start looking around down at the bottom of your um, interface for the, the hand um, icon, identify it and be ready. Um, in the meantime, while you're doing that, I, I did want to point out that we have opened up the MET Plus workshop um, website. Uh, there's only two pages to it right now. There's um, basically just a, a brief overview of, um, you know, what we're planning. Um, and then the registration is open. Um, so this is what the registration looks like. Um, we will uh, have a call for abstracts to fill out, um, you know, to, to help with um, uh, presenting, having people present on some of these expected topics. We're in the process of putting that call for um, abstracts together right now, and uh, I anticipate having that out by um, like next Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, additionally, uh, I'm putting in the, the chat uh, the link to the MET Plus Hackathon. Um, website, which is for U.S. students. Um, registration ends on um, Friday, on the 15th. So if you haven't already taken a look at it, and if you are either a grad student or no grad students that may want to um, win a um, fellowship um, here at the DTC in Boulder, Colorado, or at EMC in College Park, Maryland, to um, work on MET Plus, um, uh, go ahead and, and take a look at that, that second link. Okay, now that we have a few more people here, um, uh, just a quick question. Um, we will be com completing this training series at the end of April on the um, 26th, I think it is. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, it seems to me, it, it feels kind of strange to end on a presentation and then not have any wrap up. Um, so I, I'm wondering, um, uh, May 3rd, we already have plans for this time slot. It's the MET Plus governance meeting. Um, so uh, we're looking at May 10th um, as a potential day um, to kind of wrap up the whole training series and have a final um, Q&A session with the, the staff here, with the MET Plus staff. Um, so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and raise your hands if you are interested in um, participating in that May 10th um, Q&A session, wrap up session. Okay, I think that we have enough um, people interested that uh, we'll go ahead and schedule that. So May 10th, which is also my birthday, that, that means that we can all celebrate my birthday together. <laughs> so, um, okay, um, with that, then uh, I think we're just going to um, jump into um, letting Hank and Minna talk about MetCalPi and MetPlotPi. Hank, do you want to take it away? I'll stop presenting. You are on mute, Hank. All right. How about now? Nah, it's much better. Thanks. Fantastic. <laughs> so we have a couple um, different uh, tools to present today. I'm going to do CalPy, and um, Mina is going to do PlotPy. Um, MetCalcPy is sort of the least interactive of our analysis tools. Um, it's mainly used for uh, data crunching is kind of how I think of it. But um, there's some diagnostics, there are some helper scripts, and a variety of other things. But we will um, let's just go and see what we have. Um, the GitHub repository is similar to all the others. Uh, DT Center, um, MetCalcPy um, kind of follows the same, let's see, same uh, format as all the other ones do. And uh, you can see, go ahead here, we have some dependency issues, but uh, it's the same as all the other um, tools we have. Uh, we've got a user's guide, um, the read the docs, it's also very similar to all the others. 
Uh, and uh, you can go take a look at that. I know I'm going through this sort of fast, but they'll be in the slides so that you can refer to them later. Like we said, it's a collection of tools for calculating statistics, pre-processing, diagnostics, and other related utilities. Uh, currently, we are supporting, so we've got two official versions for MetaCalcPy, 1.0 uh, and 1.1. 1.0 is using Python 3.6. Um, as of the last release, it is uh, a legacy version. Um, Python 3.6 is going away very soon. Um, version 1.1 is going to be based on 3.8 for future releases. Um, it worked for 3.6 now and it worked for 3.8, so you can use either. But um, for minor releases and probably the next major release, it'll be for 3.8. Um, CalcPy is used in MetViewer, MetPlotPy, and MetPlus use cases. It started out being mainly um, for MetViewer support in calculating statistics uh, for plotting everything there, but MetPlotPy also uses it, and um, we've started incorporating um, CalcPy in MetPlus use cases. So it's used pretty widely in all of the tools. Um, it can be imported. Um, I will show you that later in a little bit of a hands-on. Um, Min has done a phenomenal job getting everything um, packaged up so that Pip can use it, and it is you can we can also import it or import it. We can refer to it with a Python path and a variety of the other ways um, to sort of start running the the Cockpit scripts. So I will show you the Pip install. Um, in a little bit when I do the use case. Uh, repository layout. So uh, this is, is a little bit dry, but there are some key things I want to point out. Right now, um, we have most most of these things in the main um, root area are all used by MetViewer. Um, they are probably going to stay there. Uh, MedViewer needs them in, in that location um, for legacy reasons. And they're all, um, you know, they're all statistics you can use there. We have some diagnostics. Um, this is sort of for our future uh, plans um, so that we can add things there. Uh, we've got a few utilities. Uh, you can go through those. And then the one I really wanted to highlight is contributed code. Uh, the use case, um, we, we are, trying to make it easy for people to add things to all of our tools, MetPlus, PlotPy, CalPy. So we have an area called contributed. We, can, we essentially are allowing people just to sort of, you know, dump their stuff in here. And, you know, once you do, we'll, we'll kind of go through it and um, either sort of make comments on how to for you to incorporate it uh, more easily, or we can add a few things so that it does it. But here we've got a few few contributed codes already. Um, most of these are have use cases um, associated with them, so they can use them. But uh, this is um, this is kind of the key thing. If you want to start, you know, giving back to MetCalpi, MetPlotPy, we have these contributed areas for you to do that. Um, the pre-processing, I think I went over, utilities, um, all of that is pretty straightforward. So um, let's just go and show you. Again, this is just so you can refer to it later. Um, here is the one that I am going to show you right now. Let's see if I've got this right. Uh, this is the difficulty in the index. Um, we're using um, there with this user script. We are not actually using any Met tools. We are using all Met CalPy and some PlotPy. So um, this is kind of a right now. I think it's sort of a, a unique use case where it doesn't actually use any Met tools. But um, this is in the read the docs uh, for Met Plus. Um, not for MetCalcPy, um, and uh, you should be able to find it. It's in the medium medium range, and then just look for the difficulty index. But like I said, it's referenced there. Um, let's go take a look on how to run it. 
Um, I am going to do my usual and um, show you mistakes that I've uh, made uh, when I'm doing this. But I'm starting in a Met Plus clone. Um, let's go to the Parm use cases area. Um, like I said, it's in medium range. You can see what's there. Um, I cheated a little bit and um, created a system, my own system.com, so that um, I can refer to the input data correctly. Um, so let's go ahead and find our um, run net plus. I'm going to give it the system configuration that I already uh, put in. And um, like we said a couple of weeks ago, we don't really need the dash C's, but my fingers don't um, actually allow me to forget it. So we just leave it with that. Um, and then here's the user difficulty index um, configuration file set up for you already. So when I hit return, um, I already know, oh, that didn't work. Sorry, that, that was supposed to make a mistake so that I could show you how to um, import um, Metcalc by Metplotpy. When I first did this, I did not have those already imported. It threw an error, but um, apparently it likes it now. But I'm just going to show you what I did earlier, which is pip install Metcalcpy. Um, and because this window has already done it, it already says it's in there, but that's all you really have to do to install Metcalcpy. If you have um, your Conda environment activated, um, you can um, do pip install metcalcpy, you can do pip, pip install metplotpy, um, and I think metdata db, does that sound right, Mina, or have we not done that yet for metdata db? Metdata db is not in the, uh, you're doing this from the PyPI index? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's not in there. Okay, so. Maybe we will do that in the future, but um, it really is that easy just to, to, um, to install uh, MetCalcPy. Um, so that was pretty straightforward. It went a little faster than I thought, um, but that's all you really have to do to run that user script is to um, you know make sure your common environment has the version you want, pip install MetCalcPy, pip install MetPlotPy, and that um, particular use case will run and um, uh, output, uh, I think it's got a plot in there, um, but it uses the difficulty index statistics. So um, these I am not going to go through. Um, we, um, we have a bunch of stuff to do for MetPlotPy, but here are some more examples on um, uh, things you can do directly in MetCalcPy. Again, MetCalcPy is primarily a support for NetViewer, MetPlotPy, and um, soon to be others. I think that DDDB is going to start using MetCalcPy things. And um, I believe um, MetExpress is also um, interested in starting to use some of these MetCalcPy statistics that we already have in there. So it's mainly support. Um, we don't directly call these very often, but here's an example for a rock, um, for the rock diagram, how do we get the statistics in order to um, create your rock plots. Um, and it's, it's you know, for Python script, this will be very familiar. Um, and it's just examples on um, how to really start using them. Um, just a list of dependencies. Uh, I think this is important. Um, we, you know, Python has some issues with dependencies and versioning and it can be, Kind of a rabbit hole, so um, we're, we're trying to be very clear on what you need, um, just in case um, whatever machine you're working on has issues with any of these. But these are pretty widely used um, packages and should not cause any problems. So there is the very quick overview of MetCalpy. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, and um, there are well, none in the there are none in the chat at this time. But yeah, why don't we so, take a second for people to to raise their hand if they want to. Yeah, sure. We can wait a little bit. Um, Minna's presentation will be much more exciting. Um, but we just want you to know what's out there, um, what kind of things uh, you can expect 
for the future. And you know, if you're looking for some sort of tool or um, capability in that, it, hopefully we've defined the different tools so you can look in the appropriate place. All right, um, doesn't look like there's any questions. Oh, go ahead, uh, let's see. Let's see if I can do this without causing. So Dominic asked, uh, API documentation for each function in MetCalcPy. Um, there. So let's see. No, we don't. We uh, we tried to document using the Python docu uh, doc strings. So um, I I do have been playing around with some uh, in, with some Jupyter notebooks to to come up with some examples for using some MetCalcPy. But yeah, there are just so many. Um, functions that are in MetCalcPy. We just didn't have time to, to do any documentation. Um, Tatiana, do you have anything you want to talk about? Because most of that work is, is uh, from your, your contribution. Uh, we do have comments as much as we could put, and we have descriptions of the methods. But we don't have uh, like official um, documentation where we collect everything in one place. So if you go to uh, the script and uh, look at the meta description, you will find some information there. So Dominique, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, is that something that's important to you? Um, you know, this is all of these tools are, are, are continuing to be a work in progress and we can certainly put that on the, on the to-do list. Uh, so just, you know, just let us know you know, if that's a if that's a, a must have, um, or if you can survive what what we have for now. All right, um, I will now hand over to Minna so that uh, she can have enough time to do it. Great, I'm going to go ahead and share my entire screen. All right, can everybody, oops, yikes. Can everybody see this? Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I'm gonna go ahead and present the MetplotPy side and I added Hank Fisher's name just because sometimes I forget things because I get nervous. So uh, Hank, feel free, and Tatiana, please feel free to um, interject, uh, oh, not interject, to add on if I forget anything. So if no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I have a, a list of the uh, some useful websites. Uh, one is for, just like Hank's slides, where the uh, MetPlotPy repository is located. It's in the same place with all the other MetPlus goodies. Uh, this is a public repository, so it's available to everybody. And then we have the user's guide um, uh, is on Read the Docs. It always points to the latest version. and. Uh, which is our 1.1 release. And so what you can see when you click on this, uh, there's a table of contents on your left side. And these are all the plots that we currently have documentation for. So these are all the plots that we've worked through some issues and make sure that you can run them. Um, and I'm not gonna cover all of these, these plots in, in this discussion because we don't have time. But anyway, so that's hopefully, uh, that will be useful for you uh, to peruse on your own time. And so what is MetplotPy anyway? Uh, so it's it's definitely a collection of a bunch of plots. It's it's a different beast from MetCalcPy. Uh, we have some plots that are being used. Well, a lot of the plots are being used in MetViewer. Uh, some of them are used in MetPlus wrappers use cases now. Um, we have uh, also some contributed plots. And I want to give uh, take a few seconds here to thank all of the partners who have contributed plots to this code base. So thank you very much for working with us for getting those things in place. Um, another nice thing about MetplotPy that differentiates it from MetViewer is these can be run standalone. They were designed to be run standalone as well as being used by MetViewer and Met, uh, Met plus the, the other uh, use cases. Um, most of these uh, plots in MetplotPy require MetCalcPy. So it's always a good practice to go ahead and make sure you have MetCalcPy installed 
or set up in your Python path so that when you're using Metplotpy, it knows where to find the MetCalcPy modules. And then we developed versions 1.0 and 1.1, or 1.00 if you want to do XYZ, um, with Python 3.6 based on some input from um, e, uh, N NCO from, from NOAA. And um, in December of 2021, uh, the Python Foundation end of life to Python 3.6. And so it, there will be no more fixes for security issues. So it, um, we are moving to Python 3.8 for our current and future development. So look for, for that for future releases. And then I just want to go over the repository layout, because this really uh, explains the bifurcation that you'll see when uh, further on when I talk about other plots. So what you see is we have a contributed directory in the metplotpy metplotpy contributed section, and that's from, it's basically the miscellaneous. It's the external contributors and also from other NCAR contributors and from other plotting that was done prior to the creation of this metplotpy repository. And then we have a metplotpy, metplotpy plots directory, and those are the plots that we, um, we developed to replace the R scripts in MetViewer. So we have what I'll refer to as the MetViewer Python plots, and those are the ones that will be in plots. And you're going to catch me because there are going to be some plots that sneaked in there that aren't really MetViewer plots, but that's a long story. Um, so let me just go ahead because that, that uh, little diagram looks a little hard to read. Um, here's what the repository looks like. And by default, you'll be dumped to the main v1.1, which is our latest major release. And here you see, if you click into the metplotpy repository uh, 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 directory, you'll see the contributed and plots directory. And so um, this is where, when you when you are an external contributor, this is where your code will reside. And we're also using this space. I think Hank alluded to this earlier. Is also a place for our contributors to. It's a safe place to put your your code. So we have some other code, like from the whether the WPC and some other places, to kind of park not park but a safe place to to, to put their code so that it can be shared later on. Um, and some of this some of these plots we haven't gone through yet to make sure they can work. So you want to refer to the use the um, read the docs documentation to see which plots we have gone through and worked worked out for you guys to use. All right, so the whole impetus of running metplotpy is based on configuration files. Um, we don't have that pretty user interface that MetViewer has, so you have to go in and make changes with configuration files. So this is all of the all of these metplotpy Python plots are driven by how MetViewer runs, and MetViewer runs using um, defaults. Um, if, if you were at last week's talk uh, with MetViewer uh, Tracy showed um, some XML file that gets created and she showed uh, basically you know a, a, a user interface with with things populated so that you can just right off the bat create a a plot and so we have the same type of thing going on here we have uh, two configuration files our configuration files are in YAML um, two are required a default configuration file you don't have to worry about it you don't modify it it's automatically loaded. It's in the metplotpy plots config directory. Um, the second config file that you need that that is required, you will need to provide, or you can use um, one that we've supplied for you to get started. And um, these are settings that you use to override the default. So if you want to change the title, colors, whatever, that's where you do it. it it's in the custom config file. And if you have no clue and you don't know what to do um, and you just want to use um, the defaults, you still need to provide a custom config file, but you can just provide an empty file. And then in that case, all of the settings that are in the default config file will be applied. So we, we've got you covered um, if you don't know what you're doing when you're starting out. And so the, Hank, Hank raised his hand. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I no, can't. no, no, it's totally fine. I was, I, I was going to interrupt you anyway, even though it's totally rude. But um, yeah, I was going to say, Minna, um, that although the, the configuration files are a little more difficult to use, they're, they're actually a strength, right? We, we, don't, um, we don't have to rely on a MetViewer setup, somebody else, you know, installing and, and making a display available. So 
you know, you know these these configurations files and be able to just add this to a Python script is, is really sort of the strength of NetBlock Pi. Good marketing. <laughs> um, and then, oh, but before, I, before I move to the next slide, I just wanted to add, this is a little heads up, that the contributed plots don't always follow this same pattern. So don't be shocked if you, as you're going through that list in Read the Docs and following the instructions, you're like, wow, this doesn't follow the pattern of the MetViewer Python plots. And it's because it's contributed. And so, um, you know, and they don't, they might not necessarily go into MetViewer. So we're not going to be so nitpicky and make you rewrite your, your code to fit into a MetViewer paradigm. So just a warning that if you think you're going crazy because the instructions have varied for some of these contributed plots, you're not going crazy. It's just the nature of the beast. All right. I know I talked really fast, so please, um, somebody, I, I, I've got full screen here, so um, I'm not seeing when there's things in the chat. So Hank, if you want to just speak up if, I, if there are questions. Um, yeah, you bet. I will. OK, cool. So um, there are, there's, I talked earlier about, well, most of these plots need MetCalcPy, so it's always a good idea to install MetCalcPy. So there are a couple, there are a few methods to do this, and the I think the, the easiest way, method one, I started off with is to clone the MetCalcPy repository. And, you, and because it's a public repository, you can clone that, it's no, no, no problem. By default, you, when you clone, you'll get the main version 1.1. That's what we have set for the default. But if you're brave and you want to um, check out the develop branch and, or the one of the beta branches, you're more than happy to do so. Uh, buyer beware. It could be buggy. Um, and then uh, there's a couple of, there's the, the easiest way that most people have permission to do is to set your Python path in your uh, environment variable in your work, workspace so that um, MetPlotPy, when it's calling the MetCalcPy uh, modules, it knows where to find it. So um, if you're using CSH, I have the instructions there for using the SETI and V syntax. If you're using Cornshell or Bash, you'll use the export with the equal sign. Um, I don't want to go too much into that, but th th they're, they're handy dandy. And I also have um, copy and paste instructions in your hands-on. There's that hands-on um, link to the tutorial, and you can uh, just follow those instructions. The second method is to add MetCalpy to your Conda environment. Now, this only applies to folks who have permission to create and run a Conda environment. So if you don't, you can go get a cup of coffee or something um, and join us in a couple minutes. Um, so again, you would clone the source code, uh, just like you did before in method one. You would create a, a local installation um, that's probably the best thing to do, and just in case. And so what you would do is you would um, open up your terminal window, cd to the metcalcpy um, directory. So that's the very, very top directory of the metcalcpy repository. And then you could do a pip install dash e, and don't forget the period. That period is not a syntax error. It is there for a reason. And the dash e means it's editable. So if you so desire to go in and modify that metcalcpy source code yourself, um, the uh, your kind of environment will pick up that change and you don't have to keep reinstalling things. And the dot just says, look in this current directory for a setup.py script, which exists in that MetCalpy directory, which creates the um, executables. Um, so there. All right. Any questions? OK. Uh, the third method is for Met. Um, uh, I didn't. I didn't do it for MetPlotPy for version 1.1. Uh, I did it for version 1.0. But for MetCalcPy, you, uh, I did update the PyPI, uh, which is a short short for Python Packaging Index, also called the Cheese Shop by Python Python nerds. Um, but that's where you can find a bunch of uh, third-party Python packaging. We went ahead and put our MetCalcPy 1.1 and 1.0 there. And so make sure that you've activated your Conda environment. And then you run from your command line, pip install, metcalcpy. Don't forget the double equal sign. And then you can put the version number. And in this case, we prefer, uh, we recommend that you do 1.1. Otherwise, you won't, you'll be missing some plots that you want to plot. Okay. 
So let's let's get to the to the fun stuff. Let's get to some examples. So here's the link I put to the Met Plus practical session because I like having all my information in one one spot. So when you're going back to the slides, you can just copy and paste this. And I we limited this. We had to, we had to pare down for the interest of time, and we picked three examples to cover in in this presentation. And we picked the histogram, as you recall from last week. Tara showed you some Met viewer plot types and histogram showed up on that on one of her slides. Windrose is a very pretty plot, really cool and useful for a lot of folks. Um, that's not ready. It's not available yet um, in Met viewer, but it's a it's a cool plot um, nonetheless. And then the polar ice plot is one of our latest additions to the 1.1 uh, release, and it's a contributed plot. And so we wanted to throw that in just to, for, to add a little spice. Okay, so let's get started with the histogram. So histogram plots are pretty boring on their own, um, but we, we, had to, we, we had to up the game, and we have three specializations of the histogram plot. We have the rank, the relative frequency, and the probability histogram, and I... They, they're, they're, there's a lot of red, but um, you can change that if you don't like that. Um, let me go ahead and start off with talking about boring configuration files. So we have one default hist uh, histogram default histogram configuration file for all three of those. And um, again, you don't have to worry about this. That if you are so inclined, you can go take a peek and look at what what the settings are for those. It's in the metplotpy plots config directory where we put all of our default config files for the Met viewer plots, uh, Met viewer Python plots. Um, and so a lot of those default uh, settings are just things for making your, your plot look pretty. So these are the things that we set up thinking it's a good starting point for your legend settings, plot size, uh, plot titles, and things like that. So Let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's create a rank histogram. Before you get started, you need three, three, you need to know three things. Where's my data? Where's the custom config file? And how do I generate it? So we always for these met plot um, for these uh, met viewer Python plots, we always try to con uh, to uh, give you some sample data, and we put those in the metplotpy test directory. So we, we break it down by plot type. So in this case, this will go under the metplotpy test histogram uh, directory. And it we have a simple little ASCII file, which is a rank underscore his dot data file. I'll show you what that looks like when I uh, when I hop over to the terminal for the hands-on uh, for dem demonstration part. And then we have a custom config file for you to get started. And, and that again is also in the same place. It's in the test histogram. Uh, subdirectory under rank underscore hist and it's a YAML file as with as are all of our config files and then you have a Python script under the metplotpy plots because this is a met viewer Python plot uh, it'll go under the metplotpy plots and then again under the plot type this case it's a histogram and that's rank underscore hist.py oh I have one more thing to mention we have um, uh, best practices, and I know this is going to be ad nauseum because you're going to see this over and over again when you're looking in the user docs. But um, here's what we recommend: if you can run it, run these things within a Conda environment. Not everybody can do that, but we do try to uh, um, point out which packages you need and the versions of Python that you need in the documentation, in uh, which is the read the docs documentation. So make sure you have those installed properly in your Conda environment. Um, then there's a second group of folks that don't have uh, permission to run a Conda environment. And in that case, that, that scenario looks like this. You have a sysadmin installing all your necessary Python packages. And then they also installed the metplotpy and metcalcpy code in a, in a common area and you don't have permissions to modify any of the code or like the, any of the config files that are in that in that directory so our our instructions are tailored for that latter group of people so um, if you're lucky enough to not um, to to not be in that second group you can do whatever you want you can go in and modify your your scripts and, and not listen to me anymore but anyway um, 
we recommend to make your life easier to create these uh, plots is to set three environment variables. And one is the Python path. Um, the second one is the metplotpy base. And the third is a working directory. Um, so what you would do is you would take that data and custom config file from that test directory and copy that. First, you got to create the working directory, but copy that to your working directory. And then you would go ahead and edit that custom configuration file. All right. Um, oh, and then um, I, I just for fun, I added some uh, the, basically the the CSH and I think the bash instructions um, on these next two slides so that basically uh, if you're just following the slides, you can almost copy and paste um, and, and, and follow along, or you can just sit back and relax. But so um, I'm setting the metplotpy base. Um, I'm setting the Python path so that we know where the metcalcpy um, source code and the metplotpy source code uh, resides. I'm setting the working directory so that uh, I know where my all my my uh, input data and my uh, config uh, my custom config file reside. Okay, and then for bash or corn shell, you would replace the syntax seti and b with export and use the equal sign. Same instructions, just different syntax. And then we finally, finally get to generate the plot. So what you would need to do first is go into your rank underscore hist dot yaml config file. So remember, that's the custom config file. You would look for the stat underscore input and plot underscore file name settings. And you would change those and include the full path to your working directory so that the uh, plot knows where to look for the input director, uh, input data and the custom config file. And then to run all of these met viewer Python plots, all you need to do is from the command line, give it the, the, the Python script name and the custom config file. So that's going to be the same for all of the MetViewer Python plots. Running it from the config file, uh, and running it from the command line is just two things. All right, finally, now I can go to um, some more interesting stuff. So what I've done is I have set up, I am fortunate enough to have a the permissions to run a Conda environment. So I have a Python 363 Conda environment. I have also um, created a directory uh, uh, where I'm where I've dumped my not dumped. I've copied my uh, metcalcpy and metplotpy source code. And then I also cheated and I just because I'm lazy, I put a working directory in the same in the same spot. So I, I, uh, I make a lot of mistakes while I'm doing live, live coding. So I cheated and I have um, some scripts set up uh, to where I set up the, uh, the, the metplotpy base, the Python path and the working dir. And just to make sure, oops, just to make sure that I set everything up correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, let's do metplotpy base, oops. So I didn't run this. Okay, now let's go ahead and do metplotpy base. And so you see that I correctly set up my metplotpy base. It's just a sanity check to make sure I actually have it pointing to where my metplotpy source code resides. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, rank histogram. And so I'm going to show you what. Oops. Just a reminder, so I, I, I cheated again, and I have a, a, a shell script to run this, but you can run this from the command line. And uh, again, I have the name of the Python script to run, and I'm pointing to the, uh, the um, config file. And that's why um, we recommend using these little shortcuts of setting the working dir and the metplotpy base for running the scripts. It just makes your life a lot easier. You're less prone to making typos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to this window because that one, I'll show you where I have my working directory. So I set up my working directory and I have a subdirectory called histograms. And in here, I have that rank hist.data. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that it's just a, how, how, how tiny it is. It really is just output from um, the met, uh, met tool, one of the met tools. So it, it's pretty tiny. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just for 
for fun, let's look at what's, what does this config file look like? And it's not pretty, but it's hopefully human readable. And so what you have is the stat input and the plot file name settings that you need to go in and make sure you have the full uh, path to where that data file is and where that um, and where you want to uh, um, and and um, uh, voice the I'm having a hard time talking my my problems uh, the plot file name is the name of the output file that you're creating and in this case I want to call it rank underscore hiss because I'm boring and I want a PNG file you name it whatever you want um, when you when you do this. But yeah, but definitely the stat input is short for statistic in, statistics input. So if that doesn't, we didn't call it data input. We call it stat input to match up with the uh, um, the XML config file that uh, Tracy pointed out in the when she was doing the Met Viewer uh, demo last week. So anyway, um, so make sure you have these two, and then you can if you if you're curious, you can see what other lovely things you can set here. Lots of fun stuff to play around with and mess up. Um, so let's go back here, and I'm gonna go ahead and run this guy, and I'm gonna run it live. And this shouldn't take very long to create a rank histogram. Don't make a liar out of me. Um, let's see. There it goes. And so when I do a the directory, uh, I look at the directory. I can see that it created my rank histogram. Oops. And I'm going to go ahead and and display that using display because I'm I'm on on a Linux machine, so that's automatically included. And it's running really slow. And here's my, my little rank histogram. And you see there's a lot of red. Maybe you don't like red and you want to change the colors, you want to ch change the, the label, the title, whatever. That's for you to play around with. Um, when you do this, when you do the exercise, you can go ahead and um, play around with the settings. Um, I also mentioned that we have a relative frequency and a probability histogram. And I'm not going to go through those step by step, but they follow the same formula. So you need data, a custom config file, and a Python script name, and they are in the usual places. So the data and the custom config file are in the test subdirectory of the metplotpy um, directory. And then the code is, it, because it's a metviewer Python script, uh, it's in the metplotpy plots histogram directory. And then you would do the same thing, except now you don't need to set the environment variables because you're good to go from your previous example. And then if you want to generate the probability histogram, again, you need to grab uh, the, the data for that. You'd need to use the custom config corresponding to that guy and then run the probability histogram um, script to generate that. All right. Uh, oh, uh, are there any questions before I move on to the pretty plot? Okay, now this is on to the pretty plot, and, and Tatiana um, did the work on this one, so it's, it, it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, there's the link to the user's guide for more details uh, on the Windrose plot. And this is currently not available in MetViewer, but it was developed to follow the um, MetViewer paradigm of, of the Python scripts. So this is going to uh, be a very, the, it's going to follow the same same thing that you saw with the histogram plots. So again, we have a default configuration file. You don't need to modify it. You don't need to worry about it. It gets automatically um, loaded when you're running the Windrose uh, Python script. But if you are so inclined, you can check it out under the plots config uh, directory where all of the default config files reside. Um, again, it's not currently available in MetViewer, but we did take a stab, or Tatiana actually did the hard work. She took a stab at um, setting up nice defaults for marker colors, the angular axis, plot titles, colors, etc. And then it's up to you if you want to change any of those. Again, same thing, data, custom config file, and a script. So um, again, 
create your working directory, copy that data, that test data. In this, this case, we used um, point stats matched pair data from the MET tool. Uh, and then we have the Windrose custom, custom YAML file in, in the same test Windrose directory. And then the source code is in the same place for all the uh, MET viewer Python plots. All right. And then um, again, the best practices, uh, this is just a placeholder. Uh, I don't want to, to uh, belabor this, but you know, um, copy, set up your, make sure you have your Python path, metplotpy base, and your working dir environment variable set. It'll make your life a lot easier. Um, make sure you have a working directory that where you have read and write permissions. You've copied the data and the custom configuration files. And then we would then we'll go into that working dir and edit that custom config file. And then just um, just for completeness uh, and consistency, uh, I have the the uh, instructions for setting those environment variables for C shell and bash or corn shell. Um, if you don't want to do the um, you don't want to follow the hands on part. Um, OK, so now uh, we're ready to generate the actual plot. So now uh, you go into the Windrose custom config file and you look again for that stat input, stat for statistics input, and plot file name, and which is the output plot that you're going to generate, uh, to, to point to the full path. No shortcuts, no relative path. It has to be the full path, so don't forget that. And then to generate the actual plot um, from your command line, uh, give it the, uh, the uh, name of the Windrose uh, script, which is wind underscore rose.py, and provide the name of the custom configuration file. OK, now time for the fun part. Um, I am going to go back to the terminal. And so I have um, the, oops, wrong window. Let me go to this one. Go to Windrose. All right, so here's what the, just to peek your, to, uh, to uh, not peek your period, to uh, show you what the output looks like, we used an older version of MET to create this. That's not a problem. Uh, it's just an ASCII file, so no, nothing, no, no huge fancy data needed. Um, and then we have the custom config file, which is actually pretty simple. Uh, so, um, Somebody, Tatiana, thoughtfully came up with the appropriate uh, wind breaks, uh, marker colors, angles, etc. cetera. Um, and what you need to do is make sure that you come into here and look for this stat input. And notice how I have, I don't have relative paths. This is the full path pointing to that data that I copied over into this directory. I also have this plot file name, which is a full path, not to, to beleaguer that point. And then I also want to take a few seconds here to uh, kind of drive home what uh, Tracy had mentioned last week. She showed a, uh, a way for uh, you to save the points that you're plotting in MetViewer. And so in not all of the plots, but some of the plots, this is relevant. And in this case, the Windrose plot is relevant, um, is one of those relevant cases where it makes sense to store the points that you're plotting. So that's what dump points true means. It means I want you to save the points that you're plotting to a file. So the uh, the match uh, the, the the partner to this dump points is this commented out uh, setting called points path. And if you don't comment, if you don't uncomment it and put a directory to uh, to indicate where you want to save that points path. It will by default say, "Okay, you. I don't have this. I'm going to put it where, wherever, wherever you, uh, the directory that your stat input is pointing to." So some people do not have permissions to willy nilly put um, intermediate files just anywhere on the file system, and so this uh, uh, for those folks, what you'll need to do is you'll need to uncomment that. So remove this uh, hash hash symbol. And in and set your points path to point to some directory where you have read write uh, read write permissions. It doesn't have to be the working dir. It can be any place you want, but make sure it's some place where you have read and write permissions. And then it'll save that points path. 
And all you need to do is, is provide the directory. You don't need to give a, 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 a file name because um, we will automatically assign a, a file name to it. So anyway, right now what I have, I have permissions, so I'm going to leave this uncommented and I'm lazy and I want stuff to reside in the working, in my Windrose working dir. So I, so this is where my, my, uh, that points, points file will reside. All right. Okay. So now let's go back and let's go ahead and let me run my Windrose. Kind of sort of live, and hopefully this won't take too long. Um, and no, it didn't. Um, and there's my PNG file that I requested, and this point underscore stat underscore NPR dot points uh, um, file matches this data file name but with a different extension. So it has the dot points one. So you don't need to worry about giving a name. That's why I, I emphasize when you're, that you just need to, to provide the directory name. So let's go ahead and for completeness, let's go ahead and show you what that uh, Windrows diagram looks like. Ta-da, pretty cool. Um, and again, if you don't like these colors, feel free to play around in your in your local version of your Windrose custom YAML file. And then just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what the points, points uh, file looks like. It's just a text file and it's really useful for debugging if you if you need a sanity check and make sure to make sure things are look look OK. All right. So so that was the Windrose. Uh, Windrose demo. Are there any questions about that particular plot? Okay, let's go on. So our uh, our last and and one of our our most recent additions to the Metplotpy repository is a contributed plot from Noah. Thank you very much, Noah. Um, there's also a um, uh, Metplus uh, use case for that, for this as well. So you can look at the Metplus uh, um, user's guide for the instructions to running that use case. Um, so this, uh, this does not, so this is a heads up, this does not follow the same pattern for, for generation as the MetViewer Python plot. So be aware of that. And in addition to requiring MetCalpy, there are some other third-party Python packages that you need. Um, the versions, I believe, are in the documentation. But you'll need PyProj, PyResample, and Scikit-Learn. And these are just uh, a sample of the two of the three plots that will be generated from the, from the script. And Hank has more familiarity with this than me. So Hank, please chime in if I'm forgetting anything. Um, You're doing so, great. OK. So, so there. So this is this is kind of a, a little bit somewhat more straightforward because there's only one config file required, and I just also want to give you a heads up. There is a GitHub issue on this this plot. We're going to try to make not try. We will be making this more user friendly, more configurable, make it a little bit more uh, follow the paradigm from the MetViewer Python plots um, scripts. So this these instructions will change in future uh, releases. But for now, if you want to generate the polar ice plot using version 1.1, this is how you would do it. So the data, really huge. Um, it is a net CDF file. And we are nice. And we included that data in the MetPlus data tar file. So go into your marine coastal uh, uh, directory, subdirectory under model applications to get that huge uh, net CDF file. So, Apologies, we can't put those, check that in for you into our GitHub repository. And then there, the one lonely configuration file. Now, this is one of those plots that sneaked into the MetViewer Python plot side instead of the contributed side. And so we need to rectify that. Nonetheless, it resides under the plots uh, config polar ice YAML. Um, and then the code to generate the plot is to, to follow consistency, it's in the plots. Polar plot uh, subdirectory, and it's called polar underscore ice underscore plot dot py. All right. 
So if that didn't confuse you enough, again, we, tr we want you to follow that same pattern of setting your environment variables so that it makes life easier for you and for Metplotpy to know where the Metcalpy uh, uh, modules reside. And then here's the bash um, corn shell uh, instructions if you so desire to uh, just follow the instructions on the slides. And then here comes the fun stuff. So we go into your working dir, which I need to reiterate, you have work, you have uh, permissions, read, write permissions. Uh, go inside that uh, polar underscore ice YAML file. And this time you only need to look for one thing, the input underscore file setting. And again, you need to point to the full path to that net CDF file that you copied to your working dir. And then, Here's the tricky bit, and please, if you can't remember anything else, uh, make sure that you are, your, your command line, you're working inside of your working directory. We will be fixing this in future releases, but for now, we uh, got the plot, and it only works if you're, invoke, if you're invoking it from within the, the location of the data and the config file. We will be fixing this in future releases, but please be patient with us. Um, and then to 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 generate the plot itself, all you need to do is just give the the um, the script uh, the polar ice plot .py Python script name at the command line. So, in a sense, that made it a little easier. Um, okay. Now, let's go over here. Um, I'm going to show you what I've done. Oops, I always start off in the wrong one. My apologies. Um, all right. So I have a polar ice um, uh, subdirectory. And what I have is I went ahead, because this takes so long to untar and copy things over. This is the long name, grid stat north, blah, 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 pairs.nc. So it's a netcdf file um, uh, uh, output from the met grid stat. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to show you what that looks like, but I will show you what the polar ice, the sole config file looks like. So we have this input file. And notice how I have not cheated. I have actually put the full path name to where I, that long honking netcdf file resides. And you'll see that there are three plots that were going to be created. So you'll have a forecast and an obs file. And a diff uh, and a diff plot that's that's created. Um, I would leave those names alone. Uh, I um, go ahead and change them if you're brave enough, but <laughs> I would leave them. Okay. And then um, let's see. And you'll notice that I I have only um, yeah I I have that. And then I have so let's go ahead and cat this guy. So notice I am within my uh, working directory. So I'm invoking all the, the Python command inside my working directory. Don't mean to sound like uh, uh, like I'm stuck on repeat, but that is very, very important. Um, so I'm going to run that. And this will take some time because you have a huge netcdf uh, file. And it's making three really, really cool looking plots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to my working dir, and I'm going to go to my oops, polar ice, and oops. Okay. And what you'll see now is, hey, I have a new subdirectory called ice images, and so that's what the script does for you. It will create a subdirectory for you, and I'm going to go there. And this is where those three plots are going to automatically uh, show up. Okay. Mina, it looks like uh, we only have about one minute left. Oh, okay. Um, what, that, no, you're good. Um, w while we're waiting for the last polar ice plots, um, maybe we'll open it up for questions. What do you think? Just see if anybody yep. has any yeah. questions. And, and I'm, I would like to add that this plot is not configurable like the other MetViewer Python plots, because this is this is inherited or you know it was contributed so you'll have to actually go into the source code to to play around with that we these are just 
in the interest of time, we wanted to get these out and available for people so that they could get their hands on it. And then um, for future work, we can modify things. So this is what one of the plots will look like. Um, okay, so are there any, and, and, I, and I believe um, I have just a couple of slides that there's some other contributed plots. Please go back to the read the docs to see what we have. Um, then we have, uh, I just wanted to pound home again, we have some dependencies that are some Python third party libraries that you need to have installed. And be aware that some of these contributed plots might have some exotic third party Python libraries that are required. We make every effort to keep, uh, to make sure that we document that in our uh, read the docs. And we are in the process of um, narrowing down a minimal set of Python packages to run metplotpy and metcalcpy um, for Python 3.8. All right, time for me to shut up and answer questions. I think, uh, I think you, you, you did so well that there's no real good questions, so. Or I talk so darn fast that people are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yes, uh, thanks everybody for coming today. Um, fantastic and uh, yeah, really good job, man. I like, I, the plots are always a, a fun highlight. Um, yeah. But um, yes, we will see everybody next week. All right.